Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a final year med student at the University of Warwick and welcome back to my channel. This is the first in a new series of videos called Your Life at Med School. Now the reason that I'm making this series is in about a month I will be moving up north to Newcastle to start my medical career uh, as a doctor officially commencing on the 4th of August but we've got some shadowing that comes before then. And I get loads of questions all the time about exactly what different parts of medical school are going to be like by those of you that are either early on in your medical careers, maybe pre-clinical, or even those of you who are thinking about going to medical school have lots of questions about what it's like when you actually arrive here. And because now I'm really close to the finish line, effectively, and I've basically seen everything that med school has to offer over the last four years, I thought that would be a chance to go through this series, Your Life at Med School, talking about the different core components, the things that you're gonna see, the things that you're gonna be part of, and today's subject is the ward round. But before we start, guys, please help me out by hitting the like button down below, subscribing to the channel, and making sure that you click that bell icon to make sure you're notified when new videos are released and you don't miss any updates. Now, this is something that loads of people have heard of, you've probably seen on TV, if you're a fan of things like Scrubs, Grey's Anatomy, Holby City, and so on. Why is Dr. Squeaky Pants leading rounds? Where the hell is Dorian? And you might have a vague idea of what happens, but in this video we're going to focus on what actually happens in the day-to-day -day hospitals in the NHS, and more fundamentally perhaps, why are you there as a med student? What's the point? Well, a ward round is usually part of the daily routine that happens on any given ward in the hospital. And what happens is usually the most senior doctors in a particular area, which is usually going to be a consultant, someone who has completed training in specialty, walks around and sees every single patient to check on their progress and ultimately come up with a plan for what's going to happen for that patient. Now, it's important to realise that there is a distinction here. Usually it's the junior doctors, so the foundation doctors, the SHOs, and the nurses, and the healthcare assistants, that spend the most time actually day-to-day -day on the wards dealing with patients and directly looking after them, especially the nurses. But because on a given ward, a consultant is ultimately responsible for all of these patients, potentially very many patients, one of your jobs as a junior is going to be making sure the consultant is kept up to date with how all of those patients are doing. Because remember, ultimately, that consultant is responsible if anything happens to them. And fundamentally, this means making sure that things like blood results, scans, imaging reports, things like that are chased up, acknowledged, documented in the notes, so that by the time the consultant actually comes on the ward round to see everybody, all of that information is immediately at hand. All of those things are available and then a plan can be made. Does this patient need to stay here? Can they go home? Would they be better suited somewhere else? Do we need to do any more tests? For example, let's say you're a medical student placed on a cardiology ward. You'll usually arrive first thing in the morning, say half past eight, something like that, at which time the junior doctors, those foundation one and foundation two doctors, will usually be busy preparing the ward round notes, making sure that all of that information is in place. And this can be a really busy time on the ward because everyone's trying to get all their stuff sorted. So if no one talks to you at this particular stage when everyone's running around and a bit frazzled, don't worry about it. It's completely normal. Just stick around and wait for the ward round to begin. There are two additional things that can potentially happen before a ward round, which we'll go over briefly now, which are handover and the board round. So let's talk about handover first, and I think the easiest way to understand this is try to think of the NHS as being split, essentially down the middle, into two components. You have the day shift and the night shift. What goes on between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., for example, is usually the day shift, and then what happens in the hospital between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. the following morning is usually considered the night shift. And while most people, doctors included, work a subset of these hours, what crucially needs to happen is that the day and the night teams need to hand over to each other when the shifts swap over. But because we could have a disconnect where, obviously, when the day team goes home, if they don't hand over everything they know about what's been going on to the night team, things can be missed, jobs don't get done, and ultimately we lose track of what's going on with each patient. So it's really important that the day team, when the night team comes, tell them what's been going on. Equally, when the night team goes home in the morning, 
they hand over to the new team that starts in the morning and the cycle can repeat. And the handover is usually one of the biggest gatherings that actually takes place on any given ward. It's basically just a recap of what's happened in the last 12 hours. Any significant events that have happened, any points that need bringing to the attention of the entire team. And then second is the board round, which is a lot more patient focused. And usually it's called this because on any given ward in most hospitals, there's usually a board on the wall with all the patients' names and which bed they belong to. So once more, they'll sit down, go through every single patient on the ward, just so everyone who is there for that shift knows roughly what's going on. And there's a basic plan as to what's happening that day or that night with each patient. And this usually informs the ward round that takes place afterwards. So the consultant or senior doctor will come to the board round, get a quick once over of what's going on so they get a rough idea and then they can commence the actual ward round with a bit more information as to how everyone's doing. So finally it's time to start the ward round. If you haven't done it by this point now is going to be the point where you want to introduce yourself to that consultant or the most senior doctor whoever that is. It may well be a junior leading the ward round. So you might say something like Good morning, my name's Ollie. I'm one of the second year medical students on my cardiology placement. Would you mind if I followed you on the ward round this morning? Now, 99% of the time, the answer is going to be yes. However, if the ward is especially busy, there might, for example, already be a lot of medical students who have asked to join, or PA students, or nursing students, or simply many other people who need to be on the ward for whatever reason, and it's getting a bit hectic, then they may say, no, sorry, we're at capacity. Can you please come back another day? If this happens, I cannot stress to you enough, take it gracefully, leave, find something else to do, and come back another day. Because if you're gonna be on placement here for a while, and most med student placements might be four to six weeks in a particular department, the last thing you really wanna do is piss off the most senior doctor that's in charge of you. Just take it on the chin, accept it as just one of those things, go and do something else. Most consultants are very, very happy to have you, especially if it appears that you're enthusiastic about the subject, or you come with specific things in mind that you'd like to know. Most consultants really wanna see that initiative. I really want to hear some murmurs, or I want to practice my examination. They're really good at teaching and they'll help you do that. And once again, even if you don't wanna be there, suck it up and make it look like you do because the teaching that you get is going to be better. Now you just lie still, old fellow. I've just got to discuss your case with these uh, young doctors here. Take his pyjamas off, sister. You, examine his abdomen. <coughs> ah, take that grubby fist away. The first rule of diagnosis, gentlemen, eyes first and most, hands next and least and tongue not at all. Look! So we're going to go on the ward round. It's a bit like the Wizard of Oz or a mother duck with all of her ducklings. You get these small gatherings and congregations and then you set off. Usually there'll be a consultant or the senior leading the round, as I've said. There'll usually be someone taking notes with them as well, so carrying a stack of folders and writing in the notes. You might have a nurse with you who knows all the patients well and potentially other students, whether they're medical, PA, nursing, whatever you like. So you go off to see the first patient. You'll normally have a big list. Go and find them close all the curtains around you as you should do for any patient encounter and professional curtain closer is going to be one of your main jobs as a medical student the consultant will introduce themselves to the patient usually introduce everyone else they'll say this might be dr jones one of the doctors and i've got two medical students here they'll check in with the patient just have a quick rundown of how they're doing and go through the plan with them usually you'll spend no more than two or three minutes if that with any given patient and they may examine them quickly as well. So on a cardiology ward, for example, usually they might feel their pulses, listen to the chest, have a look and see if the JVP is raised in the neck, or maybe listening to their lung bases. It will depend on the particular ward that you're working on as to exactly what they do, and each department will have its own routine. And there are several learning opportunities that can happen here, so pay attention to this next bit. The consultant may ask you some questions on the ward round about the condition the patient has. So if someone has atrial fibrillation, they might turn to you while they're looking at the patient and say, this patient has AF. Could you please tell me about the pathophysiology of AF? What is it? And what are the associated ECG findings? They might equally ask the patient if they've got good signs, if you can listen to their heart, feel their pulse, or listen to their lungs. But always remember, I implore you to remember that a patient is in hospital because they're unwell or they can't go home for some other reason. They are not a learning opportunity for you in and of themselves. That's not the point. We as med students are secondary to them being there. 
So don't blindly assume that every patient is going to be willing for you to talk to them, examine from them, learn from them, practice bloods on them, because that's not going to be the case. Actually, often a fairly reasonable percentage of the time, their function is not for you to learn from them, but with their consent, with explanation of who you are, why you're there, and specifically what you want, like why it's useful for your learning, most people I find are okay with you doing one or two things with them. And being able to tie a patient face and a story to each condition is really going to help you embed that condition in your brain when it comes to your exam. And this subject of questioning brings us on very neatly to what's known often in the US as pimping, contrary to what you think that might mean. This is a fairly archaic practice in medicine called putting me in my place pimping and it is something that you still occasionally see on the wards and what this amounts to is basically being semi-aggressively grilled by a consultant in front of everyone else on the ward round about a condition with questions that get progressively harder and harder and harder the more you get right until you can't answer anymore and it's kind of a way of some consultants asserting their dominance over everyone else putting you in your place. Some people understandably find this very, very stressful because it is, and they might choose to avoid ward rounds for fear that this might happen to them. Be aware that this is an extremely rare practice in the modern NHS. And most people, thankfully, are actually aware of how inappropriate and counterproductive a practice it is. It basically serves no purpose other to inflate the person's ego, the one that's asking the questions. On the very slim chance that it happens to you and it makes you uncomfortable or upset, like I say, please raise it with your educational supervisor or one of the seniors that you feel you can talk to and they will sort it out and make sure that it doesn't happen again. There is no place for it. It's just a relic of how medicine used to be taught and unfortunately still is in many parts of the world. You could also observe the junior doctor who's writing the ward round notes. This is essentially a dictation of whatever the consultant is doing. So while they're busy talking to the patient, examining them, coming up with a plan, the junior is usually scribbling down and documenting everything that's happened. How well is the patient feeling? Are they eating and drinking? Are they independently mobile? Are they in any pain? Did they find anything when they examined them? You know, any lung sounds, any heart murmurs, anything that shouldn't be there? And ultimately, what's the plan? What are we gonna do? Can they go home? You should also check the drug card X when this happens, which is essentially a list of all of the prescribed medicines that a particular patient is taking while they're in hospital. And there may be an opportunity to practice your own prescribing when this happens, whether that's using a dummy card X or on a practice form. And this should strictly be done under the supervision of a more senior doctor definitely do not go around adding drugs yourself to drug card X's. That's a recipe for disaster. And this process then essentially repeats until all of the patients that the consultant wants to see have been seen. This may take anywhere up to a couple of hours, depending on the specialty that you're in. Medicine rounds, for example, tend to be much longer than surgical ward rounds because surgeons just want to tap everyone's tummy and go immediately to theater and operate all day. But whatever happens, ward rounds are one of the key core experiences of medical school, and it's one of the things that you'll be doing probably more than anything else. And crucially for you guys, it's a catalyst for some really good teaching and learning if it's done right. I would also really recommend trying to follow the ward round on multiple days on the same unit so that you can get a feel for the patients that are around. They can actually develop a relationship with you and you can see how those patients progress, hopefully as they get better, but also the natural history of any conditions and diseases that they have, the tests that are done, the drugs that they take. And once you start to appreciate all of this, you will build an understanding of the wider picture of medicine putting everything together, slotting it all into context. And in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to get the most learning out of any of your med school placements. So thanks very much guys. That's brought us to the end of this first video in this series, Your Life at Med School. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If there are any particular topics that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm hopefully in a good position to help you out here because I've seen it all now. Just ready to start as a doctor but med school has been a fantastic journey and there are so many cool things that you do as part of it so i would be delighted and privileged to be able to help you out take care guys and i'll see you next time